हेलो स्टूडेंट आई एम डॉक्टर अजय कुमार सिन्हा टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस एक्सटेंसिव एंड इंटेंसिव प्रॉपर्टीज लास्ट क्लास आई हैव डिस्कस्ड इन थाल्पी एंड मेनी रिलेशन आई हैव डिस्कस्ड नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस्ड एक्सटेंसिव एंड इंटेंसिव प्रॉपर्टीज What is extensive and intensive properties? Just you listen. In thermodynamics, a distinction is made between extensive properties and intensive properties. An extensive property is a property whose value depends on the quantity or size of matter present in the system. as for example mass volume internal energy enthalpy heat capacity etc are extensive properties extensive properties depends on mass volume so these are the example i am telling you that is it depends upon the quantity main thing is the quantity or mass quantity or mass or size of matter present in the system and its examples are mass volume internal energy enthalpy heat capacity etc those properties which do not depend on the quantity or size of matter that is called intensive properties again you listen those properties which do not depend on the quantity or size of matter present are known as intensive properties for example temperature density pressure etc these are the examples of intensive properties a molar properties what is the molar properties that is generally denoted by x m capital x a small m down a small m x m a molar in properties x m is the value of an extensive properties x extensive properties x that is denoted by x capital x the value of an extensive property of the system for one mole of the substance okay a molar property a molar property is a what is the molar property a molar property is, is the value of an extensive properties of the system for one mole of the substance for one mole if n is the amount of matter then xm means uh, molar property that is equal to x divided by n means per mole x divided by n then this x upon n is independent of amount of the matter because per per unit you are considering that's why is independent of the amount of matter other examples आर मोलर वॉल्यूम भी एम मोलर वॉल्यूम इज डिनोटेड एज भी एम कैपिटल बी स्मॉल एम डाउन मोलर वॉल्यूम मोलर हीट कैपेसिटी मोलर हीट कैपेसिटी मीन सी एम के कैपिटल सी स्मॉल एम ओके देन दिस इज द मोलर हीट कैपेसिटी नाउ हेयर just uh, you understand that suppose volume uh, suppose a gas of a gas a gas at volume b and temperature uh, is kept in a box at a temperature t suppose uh, a gas at volume b means it has volume b is kept in a box uh, means vessel at temperature t now just to divide in two parts 
vessel you divide in two parts then v by 2 v by 2 okay volume became v by 2 v by 2 but what will be the temperature temperature will be the same either it is a v or v by 2 temperature is same okay and uh, then temperature is same then it is clear that volume is an extensive property how can you prove volume is extensive property then i have given example then temperature is constant whether volume is less or more temperature is same whether volume is less or more then these things what i given example it is clear that volume is an extensive property and temperature is an intensive property now come to the heat capacity what is the heat capacity in in this can say here heat capacity here just to understand you consider let us see how to measure the heat trans transfer to a system heat transferred to a system suppose q heat you have transferred to a system this heat appears as a rise in temperature if you will supply the heat then system temperature will increase suppose it was 10 degree then now it may become 15 degree like that way then heat this heat if you q heat a small q heat suppose you have supplied to the system then this heat appears as a rise in temperature of the system in case of heat absorbed by the system okay after uh, supplying heat then temperature will rise then the increase of temperature is proportional proportional to the heat transferred means q the increase of temperature delta t you can tell t2 minus t1 delta t then delta t is proportional to q means heat supplied to the system then proportional to t delta t then proportional sign you just convert to the equality then you have to multiply with some constant suppose that constant is a coefficient coefficient then q is equal to coefficient into delta t then this coefficient that is called heat capacity of the substance the the magnitude of the coefficient the magnitude of the coefficient depends on the size composition and nature of the system and this is denoted by capital c hence q is equal to capital c into delta t okay that is the q heat is equal to heat capacity into delta t okay then this is the relation between q c and delta t how much heat then how much heat that depends upon the coefficient coefficient means here heat capacity into delta t okay actually this at c you can understand like that that a heat heat uh, temperature increase or you can say to increase the one degree temperature how much heat is required okay for one degree rise of temperature how for how much heat is required that is the heat capacity okay then q is equal to c into delta t keep in mind this is the important relation i have told you the coefficient c is called the heat capacity thus we can measure the heat supplied by monitoring the temperature rise how much temperature raised we have to consider that things provided we know the heat capacity if you are knowing the heat capacity of the substance and how much temperature raised then multiply both both then that is the heat 
heat supplied that is a quantity of heat when c is a large when c is a large here we have to understand when c is a large a given amount of heat results in only a, a small temperature rise if c is a large means they will absorb more heat then 1 degree temperature will rise okay if c is a large heat capacity is large then to raise 1 degree temperature then you have to supply more heat if c value is less c value is less then more temperature will rise more temperature will rise means c value depends upon the nature of the substance to raise the 1 degree how much heat is required sometimes same in the same heat more temperature will rise sometimes less temperature will rise then it depends upon the c value heat capacity of the substance when c is large a given amount of heat result in only a small temperature water has a large heat capacity that is a lot of energy is needed to rise its temperature c now just think for the c means heat capacity c is directly proportional to amount of the substance okay c is directly proportional to the amount of the substance if amount is 100 g then c depends upon this 100 g amount is 200 g then heat capacity depends upon 200 g okay if 500 g the heat capacity depends upon 500 g then c is directly proportional to to amount of substance okay then or you also know the amount of substance depends upon the n number of moles okay then suppose amount do you know that amount of amount of substance depends upon the n and uh, then this how many n is there how many number of moles are there then heat capacity depends upon that then you can write that uh, for n moles c is the heat capacity for a small n means number of moles you are knowing for n moles c is the heat capacity then for 1 mole c upon n c upon n that is called cv that is called heat capacity at constant volume capital c a small b okay cv b you can write it down like uh, always i told you same way then cv is equal to c upon n means heat capacity divided by n okay then this is the heat capacity cv cv for uh, for 1 mole of the substance you, because you are divided by n for 1 mole how much how much actually heat is required that is the heat cv value heat ca heat capacity at constant value cv is equal to c divided by n means per mole per mole heat capacity per mole heat capacity that is called cv okay and is the quantity of heat needed to raise the temperature of again you listen important things the quantity of heat heat needed to raise the temperature of 1 mole by 1 degree celsius means for 1 kelvin 1 degree celsius means 273 plus t plus t 273 plus t means 1 kelvin okay then uh, quantity of heat needed to raise the temperature of 1 mole of 1 mole of anything gas particularly by 1 degree celsius that is called that is called what heat capacity heat capacity is the quantity of heat needed to raise the temperature of 1 mole 
by 1 degree Celsius. Now, here one more term is there, a specific heat. A specific heat, don't confuse with heat capacity and a specific heat, both are similar. Then, a specific heat, also called a specific heat capacity. A specific heat is also called a specific heat capacity is the quantity of heat required to raise the to raise the temperature of one unit mass not one mole not one mole one unit mass maybe one gram okay one kg like that way to raise the temperature of one unit mass of a substance by one degree celsius all things are same in the place of one mole now we consider unit mass unit mass may be one gram may be one kg okay then this is called this heat is called a specific heat or a specific heat capacity then a specific heat also called a specific heat capacity is the quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of one unit mass of a substance by one degree Celsius or one Kelvin. For finding out the heat Q required, for, for finding out the heat means Q required to raise the temperature of a sample, to raise the temperature of a sample we multiply the specific heat of a substance. A specific heat is denoted by a small c. A specific heat of the substance is denoted by a small c. Then if we want to know for finding out the q, q value means heat required to raise the temperature of a sample, we multiply the specific heat of the substance by the mass m because that is for only unit mass for unit mass then for the given mass m that you have to multiply into m then here you have to understand for finding out the heat means q required to raise the temperature of a substance we multiply the specific heat of the substance by the mass m and temperature change also up to what temperature you have raised definition is for only for one gram one unit mass and for one degree if mass is more more than one gram and temperature you have raised more than t more than one degree suppose 10 degree then you have to multiply temperature in by 10 degree also and mass also means you have to multiply with both mass and temperature mass and temperature means q into mass into temperature q into mass into temperature okay three things q mass and temperature then what you will get that is the you can say uh, you will get c into m into delta t that is equal to q to get the q value heat you have to a small c into s into s m into delta t means a small c a specific heat a small m means mass what was the mass how many gram and delta t how many degree temperature rest hence total heat q you will come to know and this total heat that is that is actually uh, you can correlate with or also you can tell this q is equal to capital c into delta t capital c into delta t means heat capacity into delta t delta t is as it is but c into m that became capital c heat capacity not only a specific heat capacity heat capacities capital c because c into m you have multiplied now for that you are adding capital c 
for C a small c into m means a specific into heat into mass because a small c is for 1 gram and you have multiplied by m what was the total amount that's why c into m became capital c and q is equal to c into m into delta t that is equal to capital c into delta t this is again important relation numerical is asked to calculate the heat then they will give the value of a specific heat and how much temperature raised then simply you multiply if they are giving a specific heat and uh, mass value and how much temperature raised then all three things you have to multiply a small c into m value a small m into delta t or if they are giving heat capacity then capital c into delta t okay then q is equal to c m into delta t in c into m into delta t that is equal to capital c into delta t this is a very very important relation now i am going to derive relation between cp and cv cp means what cp means c a down a small p is there cp means heat capacity at constant pressure and cv means heat capacity at constant volume because in both cases heat is required in both cases heat is required heat can be heat will increase at constant pressure also and heat can increase at constant volume also okay in both cases heat is required then how much heat is required if pressure is constant to raise the temperature to raise the temperature by 1 degree 1 degree celsius of 1 mole okay if pressure is constant then how much heat is required if volume is constant if volume is constant then how to raise the temperature of 1 mole of gas by 1 degree celsius how much heat is required then that is the cv then both have both requirement is different both cp and cv value will be different that's why how they are related how they are related that i am going to derive that actually finally it will come cp minus cv is equal to r question is asked to derive the relation between cp minus cv that is required that is r prove it okay that relation is asked like this also cp minus cv is equal to r prove it or in another sense they will ask derive the relation between cp and cv then now actually it is very easy very easy to derive the relation okay here i have already told you in the last class last classes i have discussed all the things that q v q v is equal to delta u we know already i have derived last class only q v is equal to delta u and q p means q v means at constant volume heat at constant volume that is equal to delta u and also i discussed q at constant p means heat at constant p that is equal to delta h delta h means change in enthalpy here i want to tell you one thing some more about the enthalpy in a simple way enthalpy what is the enthalpy then you can tell total heat content total heat content in a one sentence only one word heat content okay heat content is called enthalpy why heat content you are talking about total heat content because first law of thermodynamics you know q plus w q plus w okay that is the u u is equal to q plus w then q is heat w is also heat work done work done work done is also heat then total heat both are adding work plus 
uh, work plus uh, this Q you are adding. That is the total in internal energy. U is equal to Q plus W. Then E is energy. Uh, U is energy, internal energy. Then U is equal to Q plus W. Then now this Q plus W, both are heat. Hence, if you will we'll continue both, you will add both. Then that is actually H, enthalpy. And uh, this is called heat content. And also in a simple way, you can tell this is the available energy to do the work. Very simple way. Available energy to do the work. Because whatever we eat, correct? Whatever we eat, that food gives the total energy. And only from that, some energy will be available in our, uh, the sum energy will be present as a Q. Body will be warm. Always body will be warm and some energy will be available to do the work. As for example, for running, for walking, for doing, for cycling, I suppose you are adding the cycle for the cycling, for reading, all are the work, na? reading, walking, speaking, you are speaking, for that also energy is required, for walking also energy is required, for sleeping also energy is required, for uh, thinking, also energy is required. Uh, if you are doing a special work, uh, uh, less like laborer, they are doing bricks they will carry from one place to the other. Thousand, thousand bricks in one day they will carry. Then for that they require a special energy. Uh, that they are getting from the special food, they will eat more. Then all are the energy. Then you all energy you are getting from the food. Food is called chemical energy. Food, carbohydrate, protein, whatever energy is hidden there, all are called chemical energy. Then from the chemical energy, all type of energy you are getting. All type of energy you are getting. Then here I told you simple meaning of enthalpy. Don't think it is a very big thing. Sir. Then change in enthalpy, that is also only actually only change is in important not absolute how much energy is in our body that is not very important how much we are using means change is having a change is going on that is important suppose modern morning you are eating you are eating more that time your energy will be more and if you are coming from your college by evening then now you will feel you can say hungry. Then what happened to the energy? Then what you get in the morning? You get spent in walking, reading, thinking, correct? Riding the cycle or motorcycle, car, anything. Every, in every action, energy is required. That's why if you have done any physical work, if you have done suppose exercise, then that also energy went. Okay, more or less in every action energy is required. That's why by evening you will feel that you are hungry. Then this energy, what was available in the body that you have spent, that you have spent, some energy always will be hidden in our body. That is internal energy. Okay, some heat will be also there due to that internal energy, heat is there. Due to the heat, eh, internal energy is there. Then in that heat, if you add what food you have eaten and how much it will energy it will give, total you add. Eh, then how will you think that how much eh, W work you have done? How much Q, Q plus W? Then Q, okay, it is, it is inside your body. But W you can measure by the work, how much work you have done. Then in the morning, what was the energy? And in the evening, what was the energy? Then this change of energy, that is actually delta. This change of energy is called delta E or change in internal energy, delta U. Sometimes E is represented or in for internal energy, E is also related and U is also 
E is also uh, you can say written or U is I T say U is also it is written by both sometimes by E sometimes by U. In some books they will write U, in some books they will write E. Okay, delta U and delta E meaning is the same. Then that I told about the here just like then available energy available energy that is the heat content total heat content that is actually that uh, Q plus W Q plus W that is actually called uh, H enthalpy Q plus W that is called enthalpy heat content or also you can tell available energy to do the work so now relation I was discussing relation between CP and CV then already I have discussed in the last class that Q Q B Q B is equal to delta U and uh, Q P is equal to delta H okay these two relations are very important and now I have discussed you now I have discussed you just uh, Q is equal to C V into delta T okay now today only just 10 5 minutes before i told you that q is equal to q is equal to cv into delta d cv is equal to delta t and cv is equal to what that is a small c into m means a small c into a small m into delta is equal to capital c that is the heat capacity into delta t that is the q that is the q then here now you know that QV is equal to QV is equal to delta U. Then in the place of QV you write CV into delta T. That time it was only C into delta T. Now because you are keeping volume constant, then you can write QV is equal to CV delta T. Okay. Then now you got the relation CV into delta T is equal to delta U because QV QV is equal to CV into delta T. Now I told you. QV is equal to CV into delta T. And QV is equal to delta U. That is the one relation. QV. Just same way. Also I discussed last class. QP is equal to delta H. And now same way. Just like QV is equal to CV into delta T. Now you can write QP is equal to CP into delta T. In the place of CV, V, you are right now P, CP means at constant pressure. Then QP is equal to CV into delta T and that QP is equal to delta H. It means CV, CP into delta T is equal to delta H. Eh? And CV into delta is equal to delta U. Hence you got for both, for delta U, for delta U and delta H, you got the relation. Okay. For delta U, that is equal to CV into delta T. And for delta H, CV into, for delta H, CP into delta T. This you have to always you keep in mind, this relation. CV into delta T is equal to delta U. And CP, delta H is equal to delta H. Always you keep in mind. And now, one more relation, one more relation already I have discussed last class only. That is, uh, delta H is equal to delta U plus NRT. Delta H is equal to delta U plus NRT. Because you, you this relation, you, you just you are knowing that delta H is equal to delta U plus P. Uh, delta PVR that we are knowing delta H is equal to delta U plus P into delta V that you are knowing and only in the place of P into delta V you have written NRT NRT from the gas law ideal gas equation then now this relation you are knowing delta H is equal to delta U plus plus NRT but here in this case See in the case of heat capacity that is for one mole of gas. One mole of gas means N is equal to 1. N is equal to 1. Hence you can write 
डेल्टा एच इज इक्वल टू डेल्टा यू प्लस आर टी प्लस आर टी हेयर टी इज डेल्टा टी हेयर टी इज द डेल्टा टी ओके आर इंटू डेल्टा टी यू कैन टेल देन हेयर नाउ ऑल थिंग्स यू आर नोइंग इफ यू विल राइट डेल्टा एच वैल्यू एंड डेल्टा यू वैल्यू इन दिस इक्वेशन डेल्टा एच इज इक्वल टू डेल्टा यू प्लस आर इंटू डेल्टा ई एन इज इक्वल टू वन मोल एंस बी कैम डेल्टा एच इज इक्वल टू डेल्टा यू प्लस आर इंटू डेल्टा टी इन दिस रिलेशन पुट द वैल्यू ऑफ डेल्टा एच एंड डेल्टा यू ऑलरेडी आई हैव टोल्ड यू नाउ ओनली द डेल्टा यू इज इक्वल टू सी वी आर टी एंड डेल्टा इज इक्वल टू सी वी सी वी सी वी डेल्टा टी डेल्टा इज इक्वल टू सी वी डेल्टा टी एंड डेल्टा इज इक्वल टू सी वी सी पी डेल्टा टी जस्ट नाउ आई टोल्ड यू दैट दैट वैल्यू हेयर यू पुट देन डेल्टा इन द प्लेस ऑफ डेल्टा एच यू हैव रिटर्न सी पी इन टू डेल्टा टी दैट इज इक्वल टू डेल्टा यू देन डेल्टा इन द प्लेस ऑफ डेल्टा यू यू राइट सी वी इन टू डेल्टा टी प्लस आर डेल्टा टी लिव इट आर 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 डेल्टा टी ओके मीन्स यू हैव पुट द वैल्यू ऑफ डेल्टा एच एंड डेल्टा यू देन नाउ यू सी आफ्टर पुटिंग द वैल्यू एवरी वेयर डेल्टा टी डेल्टा टी डेल्टा टी इज देयर ओके सी पी डेल्टा टी इज इक्वल टू सी वी इंटू डेल्टा टी प्लस आर इंटू डेल्टा टी एवरी वेयर डेल्टा टी इज देयर देन डेल्टा टी विल बी कैंसल्ड आउट यू विल पुट डेल्टा टी आउट साइड राइट हैंड साइड डेल्टा टी कॉमन देन वाट विल रिमेन वाट विल रिमेन देन सी वी प्लस वन विल रिमेन सी वी प्लस वन विल रिमेन एंड लेफ्ट साइड ओनली डेल्टा टी इज देयर हेन्स डेल्टा टी डेल्टा टी विल बी कैंसल्ड आउट डेल्टा टी विल कैंसल्ड आउट देन आर विल ओनली रिमेन ओके सी पी इंटू डेल्टा टी दैट इज कल टू सी बी इंटू डेल्टा टी प्लस आर इंटू डेल्टा टी देन डेल्टा टी इज कॉमन एवरीवेयर एंड डेल्टा टी विल बी कैंसल्ड आउट देन वाट विल रिमेन then cp is equal to cb plus r will remain was delta t left side delta t right side right side two terms are there after uh, then delta t you take common then right side cb plus r will remain then this delta t right side and delta t left side both will cancel hence left side cp will remain that is equal to right side cb plus r will remain then now cv you bring left side then cp minus cv that is equal to r this is the relation okay cp minus cv is equal to r okay that is the universal gas constant then i have discussed or you can tell i have proved cp minus cv is equal to r or in other terms you have derived the relation between cp and cv today i am stopping only here next class again i will continue thank you